This is episode 54 with Brad and Morgan Robinson. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. Aloha, men of abundance. Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is that you're listening to this. I am so excited that you're here, but I have to say that I am extremely frustrated today because I've been having some pretty serious technical difficulties. My computer keeps shutting down. It actually shut down right at the end of one of my amazing conversations for the show. And the computer, the software that I have on the computer did not save the episode. It was about a 30 to 40 minute conversation, an amazing conversation. So I have to ask that guest to come on again and see if we can replicate what we talked about. It might be better, but I really enjoyed the conversation we initially had. That in itself is extremely frustrating. Then my computer keeps shutting off at random times. It shut off yesterday and I didn't get it to come back on until this morning. So I'm trying to get this done as quickly as possible before my (laughs) computer shuts down again. Now I want to share a lesson learned here and that is there was a time that this type of frustration, this type of obstacle and this type of technical difficulty would have really, really pissed me off. And let me point out that I'm not happy right now. I'm not excited about this situation. I'm just dealing with it in a different way. And let me also point out that this is not the only frustration that I have going on right now within the business, within the Men of Abundance community. I have other obstacles that are in my way right now that are trying to stop me, and I'm going to get into that in just a minute. Now, there are several reasons why I am dealing with this in a different way, and Part of it is because of my experiences that I've experienced in my life, Uh, growing up, being in the military, being deployed, things that I've seen, things that I've done, just put things into perspective. You know, it just, certain things, yeah, it sucks. But when I put it into perspective and remember the times that I was in Uzbekistan and seen true struggle, true poverty, serious issues in the community. When I remember back when I was in Bolivia and saw a little girl that was homeless on the street and I just had left a store and purchased some candy and I gave her some candy and some food, the smile on her face just melted my heart. It was just amazing. So when I think back on times like that, I realize, yeah, the situation I'm going through right now is extremely frustrating, but I'm going to get through it. It's going to be okay. Another reason why I'm able to deal with this so much better is because of my personal growth and experiences. Now, maybe you weren't able to have those experiences that I've had, and that's okay, but you can have similar experiences by reading, by listening to podcasts, listening to audiobooks, and associating and connecting with people by associating with people who have an abundant mindset as opposed to a scarcity mindset. Spending time listening to the Men of Abundance podcast, and there's a shameless plug, yes, of course, but if the Men of Abundance podcast does not resonate with you like it does some other podcast, then go listen to another podcast. I am excited about that. I'm excited to share those with you, and I do share many of those podcasts and many of those people many of those books and courses and communities with you on Men of Abundance. I do that because I am living a life of abundance. I don't have a scarcity mindset. I am extremely excited when I'm able to lift up somebody else because they're doing amazing things in the community and I know that they will be able to provide value to you. For instance, I'm a member of a couple communities of podcasters and other abundant people. And I posted this morning some of my frustration within one of the groups. And I immediately started getting back a couple responses of encouragement. For instance, Sierra Say mentioned to me that you know when you're doing great things, you know when you're moving forward because more obstacles start coming into your life. I've heard this from Grant Cardone. I've heard this from Jim Rohn. I've heard this from many different people that I've followed over the last several, several years that As you start growing in life, you start developing more problems. You start creating more problems and bigger problems in your life. That's just another way to grow. Those problems are there for me to grow. They're there for me to learn. 
so that I can go on and share that information and share that experience with others. And that's what I plan on doing. So again, I'm sharing this with you because I want to point out that not everything is perfect in my situation. I do have obstacles. I do have things I have to deal with. And I don't always share that information on social media, but I do share my frustrations with my wife in my prayers. And I share that information with people that I know have my best interest in mind and will give me some advice to help me get through it, whether it's personal growth or technical advice. It takes time. It's not an overnight process to change your mind from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. Just as with any other skill, it takes time to learn and master. But the cool thing is, is you can start today. And you can start simply by listening to a podcast, picking up a book, taking a course, any number of things you can do right now today and do consistent every single day to start changing your mindset. Obviously, we're going to be talking much more about this in the weeks to come because I'm going to start getting much more personal myself. I have on many guests that are amazing, amazing people. And I'll tell you, in this process over the last four months of running this podcast and talking to all these amazing people, I have grown more in the last four months than I have in years. And it's because I'm associating and having conversations with other abundant people on a regular basis. If you can't have those conversations with people yourself, then I invite you to subscribe and listen to Men of Abundance on a regular basis. We're a a three-day-a-week show, and I'm going to start injecting a bonus episode once in a while. And I have the blog that you can go to where I have a video that I'm starting to do videos and posting them onto the menofabundance.com forward slash blog. So you can go there and get information directly from me. One last thing I want to say really quick is I have partnered with Audible. I know you like listening to audio because you're listening to this and you can get a 30-day trial and a free audiobook from Audible and when you get that free trial from my link then you are helping Men of Abundance keep the mic on. So either click on the link in the show notes or go to moa-book.com to sign up for your 30-day trial and get your free audiobook. So I have two feature guests today. It's a couple, Brad and Morgan Robinson. And today we talk about marriage, divorce, building a business as a couple. We talked about quite a few very important subjects that we're going to share with you today. And, you know, sometimes we got to get deep into these type of subjects. Many people don't like to have this conversation. Hopefully we'll be able to get you to get in on the conversation. And if you do want to get in on the conversation, just go to menofabundance.com forward slash 054 and you'll be able to comment below this post and below this episode. Or when I post this onto Facebook at the Men of Abundance fan page, then you'll be able to comment on it there as well. And of course, I'll have those links in the show notes at menofabundance.com forward slash 054. Now let's introduce Brad and Morgan. Brad and Morgan help couples from around the world heal their relationships. Couples have gone to Brad from as far away as South Korea and London, England. Brad is a licensed marriage and family therapist. He helps couples in many different situations save their relationships, but is very well known for helping couples after infidelity. And they have an amazing podcast called Healing Broken Trust. Brad and Morgan, welcome to Men of Abundance. Glad to be here. Yeah, thank you for having us. It's about time, right? We've been trying to get get you guys on the show for a while, and either something came up with me or we couldn't get our schedules just right, but we finally got it done. We're excited to be here. Thank yeah. you for having us. My pleasure. So where are you guys at in the world? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yes, in the middle of the country. Yep. <laughs> I have been to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I have been. I was actually in Oklahoma during the... Um, what was it? Timothy McVeigh? It seems like so long ago. It was long, a long time ago. I yeah, and you're in Oklahoma you're, City. Are you in Hawaii now? I am in Hawaii now. Yes, I am. I've been here for about six years. Oh, that's uh, great. What island are you? The island of Oahu. Is that where they filmed Jurassic Park? Part of it. Yeah, part of it was filmed here. Another part was filmed over on Kauai. Wow. Mm-hmm. Cool. We'll have to come visit you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I tell people all the time, just get here and we'll show you the places that most tourists don't get to see. Generally because okay. they don't know about it or whatever reason, they just don't have transportation out there or whatever. Wow. It's awesome. Well, beautiful. So I like to start the show out basically the same way I start out almost every morning, which is with an attitude of gratitude. What do you two have to be grateful for today? So much to be grateful for. I 
I could start off with just the, I'm grateful that I have a wonderful husband and a wonderful son, that I have all of my faculties about me, um, you know, just just, uh, just the positive attitude, and um, I'm alive. It's just great to be alive. Um, gosh, I, I just have so much to be thankful for, but those are a couple of things, you know, I got to work with my husband today, which has been a lot of fun, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is, uh, that's big. Uh, I guess I'm thankful, obviously, for my wife. Uh, I'm thankful for, uh, we have a little 11-month-old uh, that may, he's, who's asleep right now and he may wake up. I'm really thankful for him because he's such a cute little guy. Yeah. And he's full of personality. Uh, doesn't know a stranger. Uh, so I'm thankful for him. Mm-hmm. I'm thankful for, I don't know, I guess I'm just thankful that it seems like there's always answers. If you keep seeking and you keep searching, there's always answers. Yeah. And a very wise person said, seek and you shall find. You know, there's always answers. And if you look and you keep you're persistent, eventually you'll find the answer. And so I'm just, I'm thankful for that. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I heard you kind of giggling in the background back there, uh, Morgan, with when uh, he was talking about your little boy. That's a precious age. I've got three boys myself. One's 22, 17, and 7. And uh, wow. that's a that's wow. a precious age. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. And he's uh, uh, he's a cutie pie. <laughs> yep, they Dem- steal your heart. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And it's corny because it's like everybody says, "Oh, your kids are you love your kids more than anything." But you know, it's true. You yeah. know, it's corny, but it's yeah. it's also very true. <laughs> it is corny, but who cares? Anybody who's had a child and has kids knows what knows what we're talking about. And those of you who don't, you will eventually, hopefully, because it's a precious gift. And if you don't, enjoy your nieces, nephews, and all those other little ones. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, before we got started here, I gave a brief intro before I introduced you to Men of Abundance. I gave a very brief intro and uh, talked a little bit about you, but I want to hear it from you. I want to hear a little bit about what you two have been doing. You're running an amazing business together, not just the fact that you're running a business and, and you're entrepreneurs and you're running a business together, but it's about what you're doing that that really intrigued me. I've heard you guys speak a couple times uh, on various podcasts, and I've read a little bit about you. I love what you're doing, but I'd like to hear what you guys, a little bit about your background and what brought you up to this point. So let's get a little bit personal. Well, I, uh, I've i done some career advising and, and different things um, just in kind of the counseling realm, um, but didn't um, really get into uh, couples therapy with Brad until um, he decided to, to venture out um, into private practice uh, with couples therapy. But um we, uh, we had started a, an agency to help families in the rural parts of Oklahoma um, and, then, and then moved into private practice with couples. And uh, what I do in the business is I really work on the marketing and the um, expanding of you know, the systems and the business um, of itself. But originally, I, um, I had done, I started my master's in marriage and family therapy. And really what I... Um, you know, what I was really doing is I was really just trying to, um, kind of figure out where my place was. You know, I, I uh, was kind of a Swiss, Swiss army knife, you know, I could do all these different things and, um, I had saw, seen some couples and, um, and, and, uh, realized that really <laughs> the marketing piece was yeah. the Morgan, gift. Morgan's one of those people that struggles because she's so talented Mm-hmm. And, you know, some people are so talented that they struggle just, what am I going to do? I'm so good at so many things. <laughs> and so he's blessed or cursed with that. And so it's hard sometimes just to narrow down, what am I going to do? Yeah, and so the focus was a big one. And, 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 you know, I think we all, when we're in that insecure stage in our kind of development as a person, um, we really kind of grasp for straws. We want that respect and we want that, you know, we want the accolades and we want to be recognized for who we are and for our strengths and for our talents. But, you know, sometimes, like I did, you kind of go about it the wrong way and you sort of try to force it and you try to push yourself into these molds that really don't fit you. And, um, and then, you know, you don't really get what you want. And so when baby came, um, I was really 
allowed this opportunity to sort of think, okay, well, what are the most important things that I need to focus on? Um, and so I kind of was able to, you know, kind of shed shed all of the unnecessary things and really, really focus. And I think I think kids have a way of helping you do that. Um, and so I, I really feel like I've I've hit a stride. And um, and since I've hit that stride, you know you really are able to kind of calm down and relax into the person that you really should be. And, and then now because of that, we've been able to really expand in ways that we just hadn't really thought we'd ever do. Um, and I think it has a lot to do with just being able to relax into who you are. And that's really what it's been for me. Um, and just kind of allow the right things to happen. Um, so anyways, so that's kind of what I do. I, I really focus on the marketing and the business, and I love it, and it's great. Um, and I've been able to really promote our wonderful therapists that, we, that we've that we hired, um, but also, of course, my husband. And um, so that's been a real gift, and I'm, I'm super excited about kind of the where we're going. Um, and uh, so that's that's really me, and I hope I answered your question, but that's kind of what, what I do for us currently. And I stay at home with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that in itself is a full-time task without a doubt. And I'm not just, that's just not lip service. Uh, so for you to do that and uh, do everything you're doing with the marketing, because I'm here to tell you marketing is, I'm basically a one-man show right now. And marketing is like a full-time job for five people if it's going to be done right. Absolutely. So, you know, we're going to talk more about that later offline. <laughs> Okay, yeah. About how you're doing that. So, Brad, what about you? How, what, how did you get into what you're doing now? Well, I got into this uh, really probably, honestly, probably because of my parents' divorce about 31 years ago. And uh, if they had good marriage counseling, I wouldn't be interested in this. I wouldn't have even you know, been interested in couples therapy. So my parents divorced when I was about four. And, uh, you know, obviously that had a big impact on my life. Uh, my mother had been mar- has been married a total of three times, and my father has been married uh, zero after they divorced, mm-hmm. and uh, so he was only married once. They were married about 19 years, and uh, uh, just, you know, as a child, you lose so much security when your parents divorce, uh, and it's not even, you know, I was four, but I've had clients that are in their 20s and their parents divorced. And some even older than, and you know, in their thirties and older, uh, whether parents divorce, and as you get older, even, and it's still, I mean, it's it's divorce isn't good for any kid, and there's some rare exceptions where divorce is probably better. People are better off with their parents divorce, and there are rare exceptions. It's not the norm, and it's not just my opinion. There's research to back that up uh, from really good sources. Uh, but anybody who's gone through a divorce as a kid could, will probably attest to that. I've only had a few people say, I wish my parents divorced. I think I would have been better off. Uh, and that's definitely in the, in the minority. Uh, but, my, but you know, when people divorce and you're an older kid, you think that's how you do it. My parents have been married 25 years, 30 years, and I saw them grow up. That's what they say. I saw them, you know, as I was growing up, they got along, seemed like everything was going great. And then they divorce. And for older people, it's earth shattering to see your parents divorce when you think that's my role model. That's how you do it. It's uh, it's finding out like, you know, Area 51 really is real. It just blows your lid, and you, you know, you don't know how to make sense of it all. And you really start questioning what you have in your own relationships, and your own intimate relationship. Like, you know, what do I have here with my my partner, my significant other, my spouse. What's real? Yeah, what's real? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and so divorce is uh, at times necessary, but uh, I don't think it's the majority of cases. Uh, so what got me into this was my parents' divorce uh, and uh, just kind of the wounds that created as a kid. Uh, you know, just has a big impact on you. And... Uh, not wanting to have my own kids go through that and you know, wanting to have them some for them to have something different mm. uh, so I became a do-it-yourself project uh, how can I you know not repeat this with my own kids so I 
wanted to study relationships, learn about how relationships work, and really became a do-it-yourself project. And find that formula. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's like some people grow up, you know, and they're like a fat kid, and then they study uh, health and nutrition and fitness, and then they're like a buff adult, you know, and they're really healthy because there was like an early insecurity for them. You know, I'm just the opposite of that. I just studied uh, relationships because that was a early insecurity for me. Mm -hmm. just didn't want to go through that myself, especially my kids, you know, because I knew what I went through and how hard that was um, for me and my, you know, my siblings, what kind of impact that had on us. And even my own parents, just seeing what they went through afterwards. You know, I didn't know the initial aftermath because I was four, but just seeing, like, even years down the road, what kind of, you know, mark uh, they had left on each other. And... Uh, you know, as I got older, you know, the, the initial child thought was divorce is bad, don't get a divorce. But as I got older, I realized, you know, I actually have to have a good marriage not to divorce. So mm -hmm. let me figure out how to have a good marriage. Um, so that's, so, you know, kind of, you know, I heard somebody say that whatever you're, you experience the most, what your what kind of pain you experience as a child is what you're gravitating to the most as an adult, mm -hmm. you know. And so for me, it was... Uh, you know, the relationship thing, you know, followed by to see my dad be broke after my parents divorced and him being a successful businessman and losing it all, you know, that really left a big imprint on me. And he even lived in a warehouse at one time. Yeah, I lived in a warehouse and I told a lot of stories about him. Like, and he's a great man. Oh, yeah. But it, uh, you know, just seeing that as a kid and, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like somebody who grows up in a depression. You know, they learned a lot of life lessons from that. And, uh, you know, they they don't want to go through that again. So they they figure out ways to cope and ways to uh, save money and uh, not go through it. And so that's, you know, that's kind of what I went through. Yeah, that really makes a lot of sense. And from my experience, my parents divorced just as I was getting into high school. Mm -hmm. and it was just me and my brother and when they divorced my I went and lived with my mother and my brother went and lived with my dad now with us it was a little bit different in that I had a lot of hatred for the man that my mom left with mm -hmm. uh, because you know I saw him ripping my my family apart my parents apart but as I grew older and I realized what was really going on and I kind of knew it at the time was my dad really didn't respect my mom and didn't treat my mom right and this yeah. other man said, told my mom, well, you know, they all knew each other. And I say, you know, if you ever want to get out of that situation, you have someplace to come. And one day she just took him up on it. And I look back now and I say, that's, that's the best thing that could have happened for my mom. Because yeah. she became a completely different person that I never knew. She was extremely talented. That never came out when she was with my dad. You know, I might be that, that rare instance that you were talking about that I can say it was probably a better thing for my mom, more importantly. I don't know if it was a better thing for me and my brother, but I just respected my mom for making that decision. And yeah, my dad took it very, very hard as well. And here I am. I've been married come December 25 years. And oh, only, wow. my wife and I have only been married once. Uh, and we did that through 25 years of active duty military service, which is, you know, a miracle in itself. Yeah, that's impressive. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. And I'm here to tell you, I still don't have it all figured out. And I still listen and read books with people like yourself, Brad, because I learned many years ago when we were stationed in Germany, I befriended a um, psychologist and I used to go to him and just sit down with him and, and just have conversations with him. I wouldn't say it was necessarily therapy or counseling or anything but he certainly counseled me and I, I'm all about the preventive side of counseling for sure absolutely. yeah that's absolutely. great mm -hmm. that's great I'm glad to hear that so along the way um, obviously and in, in doing all of this and obviously a kick in the gut moment is certainly when your parents divorce and especially at the age of four I couldn't imagine even my own son you know, my, my boys you know being separated or having to go through that it would break my heart but along the way in in your adult life as you're going on and starting to build this business and anybody who's moving forward in life often has 
if not one, multiple kick in the gut moments. And whether it's personal or entrepreneurial, I'd love for you to share one of those stories with us. That's a good question. Because uh, honestly, there's a lot of them. Uh, and, you know, you want to prevent them. But I think, you know, Napoleon Hill said that in every adversity, there's a seed of a greater equal opportunity of that adversity. And I really, as I've gotten along in this, I really think it's true. There's a story in the Bible of Joseph where his brothers betrayed him and sold him into slavery. And, you know, he's a young man when it happens. I mean, he gets older and his brothers finally runs into his brothers. And uh, his brothers are like, are you going to kill us? Because we betrayed you and, you know, threw you into a well. And uh, actually you got sent to a foreign country. And, he, and Joseph had enough time between what happened when he was a young man and when he was an older man to think about things. And he said, no, I'm not going to kill you guys. Actually, I know you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good so that greater good could come out of it. And I think that's really important. Like when we fail, when we suffer, when we go through terrible things, uh, greater good comes out of that. And uh, that's something I've definitely witnessed and seen in our own personal lives. Uh, and it's something that, uh, you know, not everybody gets to experience. There's obviously terrible tragedies uh, that uh, sometimes what I'm saying sounds like a cliche. It's like, well, how can something terrible like this happen and greater good come out of it? Uh, but that's that's also been my experience is that greater good really has. And one specific example is, you know, our podcast that we have now, it was... Uh, an affair recovery program that we created uh, to sell online. And we really struggled to sell it. And part of that is because we're just learning a new media or medium to sell through. Like, you know, we have a great thriving private practice. We're opening up uh, a second location right now. It's about to launch the first, second, about November 7th. And it, uh, so, so we're doing fantastic. But all the crap that we learned to do uh, to sell us a fair recovery program is what's made it made it capable for us, made it possible for us to have a second location. And so I remember telling Morgan, like, I wish we didn't even go down this road because it was like a three-year journey, mm-hmm. you know, now a four-year journey. And, That's right. You know, there's like nothing really coming of it, you know, yada, yada, yada. We didn't see the fruits until lately. Yeah, you're not seeing the fruits of it. But mm. it's, you know, it's the kind of person you have to become uh, you know, become it's more, you know, what's more important isn't having that success. It's the kind of person that you have to become to become successful. Absolutely. I can attest to that. I feel like, um, you know, we work well together. Um, but you know, it's taken years for us to really, really hit a, a, a real solid stride as, you know, really allowing each other to be who each other is supposed to be and really learning to cultivate those strengths in each other and not try to, you know, have, well, I guess it's really fear-driven when you're like, well, me, 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 right? Me, 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 instead of like stepping back and saying, well, how can I serve you today? What can I do to help you be the best you you can possibly be? And so I just wanted to piggyback off what he said because I really think that it it really falls in line with that. Um, can I share sure. when I have an entrepreneurial moment and I know Brad will remember as soon as I say it, kick in the gut. <laughs> I, I can't remember how long ago it was now. I'm, I'm very poor with time, but, um, but there was this consultant that we had and he was, you know, we were, we were supposed to be confiding in him and we were supposed to, you know, he was supposed to be helping us and so we were open about our strategies and stuff like that. Well, he saw, oh, they're successful. Well, I can do that. So he quit this consulting firm and yeah, went he lived in our, he lived in our, in our community. Yeah. And um, he, he competed against us directly and just basically took our, our stuff and tried to copy it, um, <laughs> which was a kick in the gut because we're like, oh, my gosh. You know, but somebody really smart said, he said to uh, to us, like, you know, by the time that he catches up with you or they catch up with you or whatever, you're going to be a million miles ahead of them. And part of it, I think, is because, like I was talking about earlier, living your truth, you know, 
for us, this is a passion. You know, we we want to provide the very best care for people. We are committed to quality and training and never like being complacent with what we're doing and you know both marketing and with the couples therapy piece and he doesn't have that same passion he saw dollar signs he didn't see what you know what we see and so he can only go as far as you know as we allow him basically um and part of it is you know, Ray Kroc had a really good mm-hmm. quote, and Brad, you can say it better. Yeah, than Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's. I read yeah. his biography about a month ago, mm-hmm. and autobiography about a month ago, uh, and he said that they competition can steal your plans. Yes, and they can copy your you know, your plans and what you're intending to do, what you've already done, mm-hmm. uh, but they can't beat you because they can't copy your mind they can't read your mind they can't read your mind they can't copy your mind so we'll leave them a mile and a half behind <laughs> sorry yeah. I hit the punchline <laughs> yeah. so what, you know it's uh, and Ray Kroc you know uh, they're cool. making a movie about him that's coming out in December called The Founder of Michael Keaton and uh, he uh, you know there was before McDonald's came on the scene there was A&W Root Beer mm-hmm. Wendy's I right? Win- uh, no not Wendy's uh, Dairy Queen Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a lot of other, like Jack in the Box. There was all these other franchises before, you know, McDonald's was already even a franchise, and McDonald's obviously has left them in the dust. Ray Kroc realized, look, you got to worry about yourself. Don't worry about your competition, even if they have your plans and they steal them, because they don't have your entrepreneurial mind and they don't have the mind that created these plans. Uh, they're not going to be able to endure and really beat you in the end. Yeah. And you're going to leave them a mile and a half behind. And I take so much comfort in that. And so, yeah, it was a kick in the gut moment. But, boy, I tell you, and we were afraid at the time. We're like, oh, no, you know, how are we going well, to recover? And Molly, yeah, and Molly, here's the other thing. It's like it's, yeah. a, it's a mindset of scarcity yes. or a mindset of abundance. Absolutely. And this is, you know, the Men of Abundance podcast. And... You know, one of the things I like to think about and meditate on is, you know, before man created anything, you know, man, there was nothing on this earth except for, like, what you see out in the wilderness. There was water, there were trees, there was wild animals, and everything that man that we have today came out of the earth itself, like our computers, our cars, uh, mirrors, electricity. You know, everything that we have, telephones, like paper, all this stuff that we have today, somebody used their mental thoughts and built on somebody else's, you know, somebody used their imagination, their thoughts, their mind, ingenuity, ingenuity, Mm -hmm. ambition, and they developed, uh, you know, they developed all this out of raw material material out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, that to me is very inspiring. Like before any of this was here, it was just, uh, we just spent a weekend in South Dakota just, you know, having some fun, shooting the breeze. And uh, on the way through, because we live in Oklahoma, driving through Kansas, parts of Nebraska, you know, it's just flat. And there's like nothing for miles. And all this stuff that we have came out of it, you know, just came out of that almost nothing. Yeah. You know, and we had to use our ingenuity as humans. Uh, you know, of course, we kind of used... You know, we went through a hunter-gatherer culture. We had to build. We had to switch ideas, swap ideas as humans. Uh, but all this came out of people's imaginations and their mind. And that, I think, is very empowering. Yeah, absolutely. Is, I hope that makes sense. But I like to think about that because uh, anything's possible, you know. Mm-hmm. It's not about uh, how good of a student you are, or even if you have a college degree. Uh, any of those things it's really what kind of imagination do you have and how hard are you willing to work at it and are you willing to learn from other people mm-hmm. in the process because a big part of success is really just uh, be- being a resource magnet you know, there's a, a phrase that says leaders are readers you know, they like to read they like to consume information so if you're going to be a leader if you're going to be an entrepreneur if you're going to create abundance in your life I think you have to learn from a lot of different sources. And uh, sometimes we like to only learn from people that agree with us. Uh, or we just like to learn from people that uh, really we don't learn at all. We're kind of stagnant. We just surf the Internet, surf Facebook, 
um, you know, we we don't really uh, stretch ourselves. Yeah, you know, we don't stretch ourselves. But something that Morgan and I like to do is we like to uh, read and we like to read business books, listen to podcasts. Listen to yeah, we're always listening to something mm-hmm. together. Uh, uh, or we're, we're reading books. And you know, that's really a. I'd like to say that's really a part of what makes us strong as a couple too. Is we do things together. We find um, things that we can do together that are, that interest us. We have these conversations. You know, we get excited together about these things that that we do together. Um, and I think that's a huge reason we have a strong marriage. I mean, besides you know the the education factor, but um, but I think anybody if you if you can find things that you're interested in together and do those together and talk about them, go for walks and talk about them. Um, it, it does really um, strengthen the bond. Mm-hmm. I think it's really helped us. You've got to have things that help you grow together. Absolutely. You know, more than just kids, because kids will believe. And, yeah. Uh, you know, you got to have things that you can do together that you're interested in together. Mm-hmm. could be, you know, your faith. If you're an entrepreneur, it's your business. You know, but supporting each other in those things. Mm-hmm. And um, it's super important because, you know, I, I've got some... From time to time, I have older clients, and uh, you know, it's just kind of a listening to older folks talk about their life and gives you perspective that sometimes um, you know we don't have. If you're not around older folks, you know, if you're not around, a, you just don't have that perspective, mm-hmm. and uh, so you kind of see like, holy crap, I want to be here like they are, or I don't want to be there where they're at. <laughs> and it, yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, I know we're kind of rambling on, but <laughs> but yeah, I think you know those are some things that give us inspiration. We like to read, mm-hmm. uh, listen to programs. Um, you know. Yeah, grow together, and we do that through our business. We do that. We do that through our faith. You know, we take time to do those things. Yeah. So. Yeah, you said some very beautiful things, and I totally agree with you know the abundance. Of course, as uh, as the host of Men of Abundance, and the scarcity versus the abundance mindset, like the gentleman who took your guys' ideas and information and all that stuff and tried to run with it. You said it exactly right, Morgan. And I was thinking, I said this guy's not going to be successful because he's chasing the dollar sign. I think having a purpose, because there's so many, you know, Brian Tracy. He's somebody I love to listen to, and anybody out there who's interested in starting a business or is in business or is in sales or just wants to be you know, more productive, I would go to briantracy.com, and he's got a lot of really good information. You can find him on iTunes as well. But something he talks about is that 70% of all business decisions that you'll make in the fullness of time will have turned out to be the wrong decision. And so you know, if, you're not, if you're only doing it for money, and you're not passionate about it, what you're trying to create and do. You'll give up. Uh, you're, yeah, you're going to give up because mm-hmm. there's so much adversity. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many obstacles and adversity. Uh, you're not going to, you're not going to follow through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or at least, you know, that's true for me. Yeah. And I think it's true for most of us. Yeah, and I think um, maybe a little bit of what you're saying too, a for purpose business is also like it's got to come from the heart. It's got to be. It's got to be purpose driven. It's got to be um, something you're really passionate about. Absolutely, yeah. it can't just be, you know, somebody else's truth. Like going back to the beginning, it's got to be your truth. It's got to be your your passion. It can't be, you know, a knockoff. It's got to be. It's got to be the real thing. It's got to be authentic. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's what makes a successful entrepreneur. It's what makes a successful business, and it makes for a successful leader. Somebody who wants you know, in a leader, there's people who want to follow, you know, follow leaders. Well, it's because they're authentic. It's because what they're doing is true to them. And when you're true to yourself and you're true to your mission and your passion, it shines through. You don't have to force, you know, you don't have to force someone to respect you. You don't have to force your hand. You just be you and and it works. It just works because it's your God-given talent and you know you have to take pride in it, and that's that's something I've personally been working out. It's been a it's been a work in progress, um, but I think you know I think once you find that stride, it really 
you know, it's really a wonderful thing. So, um, so it is. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you two definitely have what I believe is a for purpose. You definitely have a purpose, and, and I don't know if you label yourself as a for purpose business, but I would like to hear, I know you've got many amazing stories of couples that you've helped in one way or another, Brad, uh, and I would love for you to share at least one of those very exciting stories, one of those ones that you just had to come home and talk to Morgan about uh, that you guys shared and got excited about. Yeah, it's just been a lot. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, I think, uh, you know, this kind of work, marriage counseling, you get to know the folks that you work with because people are very, very honest. Like, uh, if you're going to come to marriage counseling and lie, your spouse will call you out on it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so obviously some people might lie because there's certain things they're just embarrassed to share, you know, to somebody. But uh, typically people are extremely honest. And even those things that they're embarrassed to talk about will come out. Uh, because they may be things that get in the way, but I have one couple, um, I actually have a lot like this, um, but, you know, when you're when you're growing and you're learning yourself, there's just some people that leave a real impression on you, and I have one, um, and I talk about them a lot in our podcast, like in different areas, <laughs> I use them as an example, uh, just because there were so many, uh, it was a couple where there was an affair, and he came in. Um, and this is years ago. This is maybe like, like at least three years ago, maybe four years ago. And uh, but I still think about him and I talk about him because it was like such a made, created such an impression on me. But he had an affair, and um, he uh, got caught with one affair. But he ended up ha- he really only had like only, but he really had like uh, eight or nine affairs total. And he got caught with one, and usually part of the affair recovery process is the spouse who got betrayed has got a lot of questions. You know, like, why did you do this? Yeah, what happened? Right. You know, like, you know, things like that. And people, when they're betrayed, have a pretty good lie detector on them. And they know when they're being lied to, and, you know, they know um, when they're not getting the full truth. And so they um, they can't, they're hypervigilant. You know, their their spidey sense comes out, and they just know when you're not being honest with them. And so, long story short, uh, just getting to help that couple, uh, you know, through that, because uh, they had a, you know, impact on me as well. Uh, and I got to be friends with them, you know, within the therapeutic setting. Uh, and, and they, you know, later had a kid after that. Um, and uh, hearing from people that have had kids because of what we've done. Yeah, yeah that's you know, awesome. Like, what hey, we've had a kid since we've been in your office. You <laughs> yeah. know, we wouldn't have had it. Yeah, uh, we wouldn't have had, we wouldn't have, we would not have been able to have the intimacy. And they send, they send pictures and, and it's just a wonderful thing. Yeah. Just love to see yeah. that. It's great. Uh, you know, things like that are really great. Yeah. Um, but that couple, you know, honestly had an impact on me because they helped strengthen my own faith. And so that's why they have an impact on me. And there's other couples that have, you know, have helped, but uh, that one had a real, they, you know, I had a profound impact on them and helped them. But that couple, because of their faith, had a profound impact on me too. And uh, so that's why I think about them. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes we did premarital counseling, and I felt like, man, this guy is... Oh, before we got married. Yeah, before we got married. He, you know, it's kind of the thing we wanted to do. And I thought, this guy is not even listening. He's not even paying attention. Mm-hmm. He had some sort of, like, dry eye problem, and he would, like, roll his <laughs> eyes and blink a lot. <laughs> he, never, he never actually explained it. But that's my assumption. Yeah. And I'm um, like, okay, he... Doesn't I, care about He doesn't care. Yeah, I didn't think he cared at all. <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, but the couple's... I work with and you know, we have at our office we really care about them because uh, it is a mission for us yeah and uh, for that couple even though it was years ago they had a, a real impact on me um, just you know because uh, kind of how they dealt with their trauma and how they grew and how they changed and uh, getting to see that had an impact on me and of course all the couples do um, that one was uh, kind of early on in my experience working with couples, and so that had more of a impact on me. 
Yeah, that's really beautiful. I really appreciate you sharing that. And I'm sure you've got many, as you already said, I know you got many, many more. So, Morgan and Brad, we are at the point in the show where we are going to pay it forward to Men of Abundance. You ready to do that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Beautiful. So give Men of Abundance one to three actionable steps that they can take today. Okay. To, um, well, for, you know, for me, just kind of going back to what I was saying kind of originally in the beginning, you know, I think we all want to find our place where we are, you know, recognized for our strengths and recognized for, you know, what we contribute. I mean, we all want that. And if we can give that to others, you know, before we try to take it, you know, you can, you can do so much more. So giving, right. Giving before we expect something, um, or even like giving without expectations, um, is, is a real mark of, of strength. I think another is, you know, um, when we live out our truth, when we decide to like let go of, um, kind of ourselves and what we want and just sort of, um, you know, not try to force, you know, things, you know, I'm going to take this, I'm going to do that, you know, which in some ways that that can be good. I mean, because that's, you know, being motivated or whatever, but in other ways, without mowing people down is what I'm trying to say. Um, You know, when we're able to sort of like follow our truth and relax in that, you know, that's when those, um, those things will just naturally come because people will see uh, it'll just kind of roll for you. Um, so I guess not forcing not forcing yourself into someone else's truth, basically, but really living your own strengths, really living your own, um, you know, your, your own gifts and that kind of thing. And being proud of it. Um, and that, you know, you're, you're not like, oh, I just do this. Oh, I just stay at home with my kids. Oh, I... I'm a, I just do this or that. No, but like really taking pride in that and not letting anybody really um, make you feel bad about that because if they're making you feel bad about your strengths and about what you do, then it's really a mark of, of them. It's really, it's really their sadness and it's really sad because, um, because truly if you can, you know, just kind of live, live out what you're called to do, um, you'll find that, you know, the, the respect will come, um, what you really want in life will come and it'll be a lot better. Yeah. It's a lot happier. Yeah. So anyways, I'd like to answer that. Yeah, what go ahead. Actionable steps. Can you take today? Uh, I think maybe similar to what Morgan's saying. I would just say it differently. I would say, figure out what you really want. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's, a. Uh, um, Oh, I forgot his name. Uh, Earl Nightingale, he said, you become what you think about. Most of the time. Yeah, what you're spending most of your time thinking about is what you become. Mm-hmm. Uh, and once you you know, you know, have a goal, you can attain it really quick. Mm-hmm. But the problem for most of us is we don't, we don't know what we want. Yeah. And so we go through like a million ideas. We go through a lot of things. and But once you really know what you want, you get it really quick. You know, you seize it really quick, and um, you know that's when you'll persevere. That's when you'll ride out uh, through trials and tribulations because you really want it. You know, that's you know that's what you want because you've sifted through all these other ideas. And uh, I would say, you know, the biggest actionable step is um, really figure out what you want and focus on it, and you'll get there in you know relatively short order and sometimes you find out what you really want by trying a lot of different things yeah and you got to fail i mean that's yeah that's that's the downside of success is you got to have a lot of failure to succeed yeah excellent excellent point and morgan you hit it right on the head and i say it all the time you really do have to expose yourself to many different things and you guys repeated what you said earlier is you have to fail you absolutely have to fail if you're if don't be afraid of failure ex- expect it and then all it's only failure if you don't learn from it and then move yeah. on the way i see it so what book would you two recommend to our abundant leaders and why oh gosh i if you're in your 20s or even in your 30s there's a book called the defining decade by meg j 
I recommend that to everyone, um, especially in your 20s. Um, I give it to every one of my family members and friends who are graduating high school. It's a great book um, because she's, well, she's a psychologist who um, basically counseled uh, 20-somethings, and um, she basically compiled all of the things that she noticed that they were doing to sabotage themselves and um, and she basically gives you the antithesis, like the strategies for avoiding those situations that kind of um, keeps you from really living a full, abundant life, basically. And so it's it's a great book. I, I love that book. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, Meg J, the Defining Decade. That's what I would recommend, at least right now. There's a lot of books. There's good ones. But. Uh, gosh, to be honest, probably whatever book I'm reading at the moment. <laughs> right. You know, honestly. I really mean that honestly. Yes. Uh, uh, gosh, uh, the book that's probably had the most impact on me—it's uh, a spiritual book called "When the Church Was Young," and it's about the first 700 years of Christianity, and that had a uh, a big impact on me. Getting to read that and understanding what early Christians were like and what they went through, what they believed. Um, I'd recommend that hands down. It's probably the best book I've read in the last ten years. Uh, it's page turner. It's not. It's not a boring subject at all. I know it sounds boring. Uh, it's not boring at all. Uh, in fact, after I read it, I got it as an audio book to go through it again. Uh, a, you know, a non-spiritual book. Uh, I would say anything by Brian Tracy. I would get any audio program he's created. Uh, that his materials had a profound impact on me, and uh, he's kind of a business business coach, and uh, you know that's had a profound impact on me. Yeah, I haven't heard of any either of those two books, but I will definitely have the links for those books in the show notes of this show. And um, you've mentioned Brian Tracy a couple times. My first introduction to personal development was going to the library in Germany. As a matter of fact, I was there. And going on post in the library, and I found some audio cassettes of Brian Tracy, Earl Nightingale, uh, Jim great. Rohn, Zig Ziglar. These were the greats, but I wore those things out. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, what the impact did that have on you? Oh, profound impact. I mean, you know, if, if anything, it. Uh, I've, I've just been a perpetual learner ever since then. When I, you know, when yeah. I was growing up, uh, I didn't do well in school because I didn't care for school because I didn't care for the subjects I found out later. The only subject I liked was anatomy and physiology. But I always wanted a set of encyclopedias. It was the craziest thing because I wanted to learn what I wanted to learn, and I liked mm -hmm. factual information that I could use uh, and stuff like that. So um, I've been a perpetual learner ever since then, and, and I've even now, like you mentioned, podcast. I never. I'm listening to... Um, Grant Cardone right now is the book I'm listening to, which is his latest, Be Obsessed or Be Average. And so I'm, my podcasts are kind of stacking up because <laughs> I'm listening to oh, that yeah. book. But, but yeah, it's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful thing to just learn something new every single day. And I learn something new multiple times a day, especially because I get a chance to talk to amazing people like you two. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Willie. So what daily habits make up the biggest impact in your life? I would say the learning, uh, continuing to learn. I always, I, I get depressed if I'm not moving forward. And so uh, it's not just, you know, I got to move forward. So I got to learn. I got I to be productive. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Perfect. Yeah. So I got one. Yeah, oh, I, go ahead. Go ahead, Morgan. Oh, no, sorry. I was just going to say, um, for me personally, it's prayer. Just a daily life of prayer <laughs> mm -hmm. i love it yeah of gratitude yeah, yeah absolutely all right so this is my favorite question to ask because i'm always intrigued because this is just the premise of my whole show and i love asking this question of, of folks that i talk with on men of abundance as well as off I, it just strikes people kind of odd when i ask them this question uh, unless they're on the show but because you guys were expecting it but what does living a life of abundance mean to you I think it means taking care of other people, having an opportunity to uh, give back and help other people. You know, not not 
leave the world better than you left it. Uh, you know, I, one of the, you know, there's, you know, there's count, there's situations that come up in counseling. Uh, some of them are, you know, obviously heartbreaking. And there's moments where I'm just thinking, thank God I was not a bully in high school. Because I'll have people who were bullied in high school. And it's heartbreaking. Because here we are, you know, grown adults. And there's these wounds from being a kid. Uh, middle middle school, high school. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, thank God I was not a bully. You know, I was even back then I was somebody that, you know, defended the vulnerable. Uh, if somebody was a bully, picking on a kid. I was the one who was, you know, kind of taking the side of the, the kid getting picked on. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, so I think living a life of abundance to me is, you know, looking out for other people and uh, being able to give back and, and not just be a taker, but being, you know, somebody that can contribute and make the world a better place. And that means a lot more to me now that we've got a little 11-month-old. Uh, we're doing stuff uh, to help people in our community because uh, my son's going to marry somebody in our community and uh, I want them, I want to have more healthy families. And, uh, yes. you know, so I'm trying to trying to think of more ways to give and, and be helpful because uh, I want my son, you know, to have a strong marriage and, of course, his kids also, you know, have a strong marriage as well. And so, uh, so that's, that's what it means to me. Yes, yes, and I would totally concur. That's exactly what I would say as well. Perfect. So beautiful. So we're going to wrap this up, but before we do, you guys have already shared so much great information, great stories, but i like uh, just a quick parting piece of guidance and any way that we can get in touch with you. Well, um, I think we, we have a podcast called Healing Broken Trust. Um, there's a website that goes along with that called healingbrokentrust.com. Um, that's probably the best way to get a hold of us. Um, and uh, so, yeah. You have anything guidance for yeah, us? Right. It's, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Well, I truly appreciate your time. You have shared so much great information, and uh, we spent a little bit more time on than I expected to, and I love it because you told some great stories and you shared some great information, and uh, I just really appreciate it. Well, thank you, yeah, Wally. Thank you, Wally. And thank you guys for listening. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Have a good evening. All right, Abundant Leaders, I know you got something out of that conversation. And if you did, please make sure that you share this with others that you feel need this message today. Now go out and live your life of abundance and make sure to pay it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.